terms of engagement, posting, and um, showing your face on your account? Ah, oh, I'm going to say at least three to five times a week. If you're not showing up at least three times a week, you need to be. <laughs> In terms of like you need to be. Or... Yeah, look, there isn't one rule. There isn't one definitive rule. And I say that all the time. Every business is different. Every follower is different. And what your follower wants from you is going to be different from the follower next to you. It depends on your business. It depends on like... Are you a shop that has new clothing items coming in every day that you can continue to share, like things like that? But I think if you can always be ensuring you're showing up at least three to five times a week, and what really helps with that is content planning. So if you can plan your content for the month, use a scheduling app like Planoly, Plan Favorite, um, then you're, you're going to show up more and you're going to show up consistently because instead of opening your phone every day and going, oh my God, what am I going to post today? I don't know what to post. And then you just scroll and then you scroll and then half an hour has gone by and you think of three things that you could post and then you see your competitor and you think, oh my God, their post is so much better than my post. Why should I even bother? And then you shut down your app and you don't post. And then you keep doing that every single day and then it's the end of the week and then you haven't posted anything and then you just put up a random meme because you feel like, Oh, I better shut something up. And then you get yeah. no results because you don't have a proper strategy. If you pre plan your content, you can avoid all of that and you can actually get results. Well, that's basically me most of the time. So definitely need to <laughs> step that up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I know like when I do it, it's, it works really well. But just like taking time because it is very time consuming to have like a consistent good content like i'm not a believer of like just smashing something out just for the sake of it but like totally. having something actually then that is like really good content takes a lot of time to actually plan the whole thing ahead yeah i do recommend set like every small business owner should set aside a day a month to content plan um in the social club i have content planners that i teach and that's what i recommend anyone that's content planning for the first time does they set aside a day a month. And I know there's people who might think, oh, my God, a whole day. But this is your marketing strategy. If you are using Instagram as your main channel to tell the world that you exist and to get customers, a day a month is nothing. Like there's businesses that have entire marketing teams that work every day, all day on doing this. So if you're a small business and you want to compete with the bigger brands online, which you are doing, whether you like it or not, a day a month is a very, very, very small inve investment into growing your brand online. Okay. Um, and one probably hot topic now right now as well is TikTok versus Instagram because um, with all the Zuckerberg announcement and everything, there's a lot of movement happening towards TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, it's still different, but it's also very similar. And it's getting more like similar and similar every day. So mm. I was wondering, what is your thought about like Instagram versus TikTok? So everything <laughs> TikTok does, Instagram copies. Um, yeah. You can guarantee if there's a new feature on TikTok, it'll be coming to Instagram not far behind. I think for small business owners, I still believe that you really need to identify who is your customer, what, what age bracket do they sit in? Because if they are that younger age bracket, I don't even know the alphabet gems, like Gen Z or whatever they are now, then they are probably on TikTok and it's worth you investing your time into that. Instagram is still skewed at a bit of a higher age bracket. So if your customer's older, um, like, I don't know, what's the other gens that are the older <laughs> ones, whatever they are, um, then Instagram's still where it's at. But, like, it's that – what's that concept that's, like, you can bring to a horse to water but you can't make it drink? Like, yeah. you, you can't bring your customer on the app. You need to seek your customer out wherever they are. So if they are on TikTok, then you need to be on TikTok. If they are on Instagram, then it's better for you to be on Instagram. If they're on both, then be on both. But I, I think anything that you do on TikTok can also be great practice for Instagram because Instagram just copies everything TikTok does anyway. <laughs> Which is really interesting, interesting how they actually get away with that because it's like, 
it can't be it can't be okay anyway we are happy with all the features that are coming along so it's all good yeah <laughs> it's good for brands absolutely and in terms of like obviously you've been very close with all the features and all the latest trends and everything that's coming up with instagram do you have like any kind of insights or any kind of um feeling where things things are going in the future i get asked this all the time like i spend every single day looking at what's coming and what's hot on um instagram but i also don't know more than you i just spend more time looking into researching it. Yeah. so yeah researching which i absolutely love something that i would really like to see which i've been saying for ages i would love a service shopping feature so right now the instagram shop you have to have a product but there are so many services that use instagram to sell i would love to see a feature that is more skewed to services um but will it come or not Awesome. Yeah, that would be really cool in terms of like digital products and courses or sign up for yes. events and all of that. That would be really yes. cool. I would, I yeah. would enjoy it as well. I mean, they're sort of, sort of getting there. With, like, for example, most service-based businesses have a sales funnel, which starts with some sort of lead gen. And I know that you can add a link that goes to your lead gen, et cetera, et cetera, in stories, which that was a good first move by Instagram allowing yeah. anyone with a business to add a link versus previously it was only businesses that were verified or had over 10k followers but wouldn't it be good if within the app you could start your sales funnel versus oh, yeah. moving off the app so I'd love to see something like that but or even losing using links in the in the um, posts, which is like still not really like a thing, so that would be cool as well. If you can do that, yeah. I don't think links in captions will ever come because links in captions take you off the app. No way. Instagram yeah. makes money by you staying on the app. The longer you stay on the app, the more ads you see, the more money Instagram makes. So I don't imagine anything that's going to take you off the app, they're going to push. But if there was something in app, like how there's in app shopping, um, that could be cool. Yeah. Ah, oh, love it, love it, love it. Mm, we'll just say, watch this space. Watch this space, definitely. Awesome. Um, obviously, you are having the courses, and you just did a little bit of a, a launch, I think, as well for your, for your social club. Is there anything coming up with you? I heard that you're going over east at some stage. Oh, gosh, I would love to. So Social Club, I have the membership, which is like the fundamental part of what Social Club is. Um, I'm just about, I've just completed a beta of a new service that I'll be launching within the Social Club soon. However, after completing the beta, I discovered it's actually three services, not one service. So watch this space because I'm just finalising all of that at the moment. Um Oh, and then on a personal side, so I'm building a house, but the housing market in Perth is at absolute shambles. Terrible. So, yep. yeah. So we have been building for two years now, and we just got a letter on Friday saying it's going to be even more delays. So we'll be lucky if the house is ready like mid next year. Um, obviously, Perth is like a prison to get in and out of, or WA. And so my husband and I thought, well, why don't we just move to the East Coast for a while? I've got heaps of members on the East Coast. I've got plenty of contacts. So that might be something that we might look into doing and and then we can yes. travel in and out of there and um, we've got family in Croatia, we've got family in New Zealand, so I can I can live all over the place. So it's like when you have an online business, sometimes you actually forget that you How can flexible, be yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you just get so used to working a certain way, which is from from one place but my business doesn't actually require me to be set in any one place which is awesome i just think i need to kind of realize that myself yeah and take advantage um, of it a little bit i've i see a very very uh, a lot of similarities my partner is also croatian so we also want to spend more time in croatia and we very also nice. build a house right now and oh. the house market is terrible so yeah, yeah i totally get where you're going where you're coming from 
to my husband because I do like to try and find, you know, the silver lining on every story. And I kept saying to my husband, there's got to be something else. Like there needs to be another reason or something we do that we never would have done if our house was ready in time. And I yes. feel like this is what it might be. So we'll see. Time for an adventure. Time for an adventure, right? Like why not? We've been stuck here for three years. Like, ah, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Um, is there anything um, in that you Obviously, there's such a uh, Instagram is such a big topic, and there's like we could talk there forever. Is there anything yes. in particular that you um, that we need to, that we need to still share, or that you want to share to round this thing up? Look, I think when it comes to Instagram, don't get sucked into the highlight reel because actually consumers don't want that. I think when Instagram first came around and, you know, it was the first app that had filters and filters were something completely new and people got really caught up in filtering content and then all the different photo editing apps started to explode and people got really into that as well. But there's definitely been a push up against that. Like people just want real. They, no matter what stage in your, of your business you're at that, that they want to see where you're at and they want to meet you where you're at so I don't know why but a lot of businesses I think when they start have to pretend that or feel like they have to pretend they're this massive global conglomerate for people to take notice of them but it's not true just just show up as you are doing what you're doing with integrity with authenticity and that's going to grow your account a lot faster because you're going to be so much more relatable, relatable. totally and and that's what that's what users want so i know people say it time and time again but really just focus on being you rather than copying what anybody else is doing and you will get results a lot faster i promise you there was one last question i totally forgot to ask influencer marketing because that's obviously yes. such a massive topic as well and totally forgot about mm. that because e-commerce and influencer marketing is like one on one on the same mm. many times um yeah how like what do you think is like a good way to um to look for like an inf influencer when like companies are coming and say like cool i need to like have, get a little bit more exposure with like influencers mm -hmm. What is a good way to find good influencers for them? So honestly, I think you really want to, you need to nail down your ideal client. So you need to know who you're selling to, right? When you know who you're selling to, you can find influencers that are this person. Like, let's say you're a fitness brand. You're wanting to find an influencer that promotes fitness brands because their following are going to be people that follow them for the fitness brands they promote. So you want it to come across as like organic and valuable to their audience because that's when people are going to buy. So really ensuring that the influencers that you're using have a following that is made up of your ideal client, asking them, them for screenshots of their insights so you can ensure that, you know, let's say, again, if it's a fitness model and you're a fitness brand, that their following isn't made up like of 90% of men from India. Like, <laughs> You, you want to ensure that their followers are your customers and there's nothing wrong with asking to see an influencer's insights. So just really make sure that you take your time and you find influencers that also respond to comments, respond to DMs, genuinely engage with their following rather than just slapping up a post, taking your money and then, you know, disappearing or deleting the post later. So that would be my best my best tips to get started okay and in terms of the size of the influencers would it be like um smaller and keep it more real or i mean look again there's a lot of conversation for and against smaller versus bigger i think it depends on your budget really if you've got the budget to hire a massive influencer that has phenomenal engagement with a following that is all your customer then go for gold. But if you don't, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the smaller or micro influencers because they generally have a much higher engagement rate anyway. 
So higher engagement rate means higher influence over their followers, which essentially means more sales for you if, if you're hiring them to do a campaign. So do your research, um, work out what your budget is, and then, and then find the best match for your brand. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brooke, for your time. I really appreciate all your insights and knowledge nuggets that you share with us. And sorry right, about the little technical issues in between, oh, but we got fine. there eventually. <laughs> we got there, and that's what happens with technology. I always say I'm allergic to technology, or it's allergic to me, because things like that just always happen when I'm teaching. Like if something <laughs> can go wrong with tech, it will happen in my vicinity. So apologies. Well, at least that you're used to it. That is totally yeah, fine. Yeah, I, I am used to it. The show must go on is my motto. <laughs> Nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah, if you need anything in terms of Instagram, go make sure you follow Brooke and you get um, into the social club because she's an absolute legend. Thank you, Avon. Thank you to everyone who joined us today. Much appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Have a good day.